Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the land of Kitakami. Before we get a new trailer for the DLC and learn a little bit more, I wanted to offer some thoughts on its location, why I feel that it's not close to Paldea, and what that fact could mean for the area of the region that is sectioned off on the map similar to Area Zero, the area that before the DLC was announced, a lot of people speculated could be Kalos. Let's discuss it. The land of Kitakami is where you're going to be going on a studying opportunity for either the Naranja Academy or the Uva Academy, depending on which version of Scarlet and Violet you play. It's going to coincide with a seasonal festival that is held in Kitakami, and a lot of people have speculated that it's going to somehow involve with the plot this big, monstrous looking mountain that seems to be in the land of Kitakami. But as many people have noted from the description and a lot of stuff we've learned about Kitakami already, it doesn't seem to be particularly close to the Paldea region. It seems as if you are traveling with your fellow students and professors a bit of a trek away from where you learned to be a Pokemon master in the Paldea region. That would probably tell us that this area is not going to be the part of the map that is sectioned off to the north East. If you take a look at the map of the Paldea region, there are two areas that are almost kind of ironed off in comparison to the rest. There are lines going through it. It seems to symbolize that you're able to travel to this region, but the region is displayed as a separate map is the best way to describe it. Those two areas are Area Zero in the crater at the center of the Paldea region, and it's this area off to the northeast. Now, Nobody needs a reminder that Paldea is based on Spain. Kalos is based on France. In a real world map, these two land masses are incredibly close to each other. They are literally part of the exact same continent. There's nothing separating them. The land mass just continues. So if the Pokemon world is to be taken as kind of a model or an example of something inspired from the real world, as we see with the Japanese inspired Pokemon regions of Johto, Kanto and Sinnoh, as well as Hoenn, but that's a bit of a separate case, then you would be one to believe that Paldea and Kalos, as well as Galar, are pretty close to one another. But Kitakami doesn't seem to resemble Kalos in any way. There doesn't seem to be a ton of inspiration based on the Kalos region. A lot of the Pokemon that we've seen in the trailers don't seem to be Kalos inspired. It seems like it's very different. The region that many people have pulled and pointed to as the most similar to what we're seeing in Kitakami is the Johto region. The cultural aesthetic of Kitakami seems a lot more Japanese. A lot of the Pokemon that the Pokemon Company and Game Freak have chosen to use as examples and show off in some of the trailers have been Johto Pokemon, Wooper, Yanma, some of them, and we've seen them in their non-Paldean forms with Wooper. These are Johto Pokemon. These are Japanese-inspired areas. A lot of people have used it, including myself, to speculate that it could be hinting at a return to the Johto region next year with a Legends Johto game or some other Johto remake, because most people don't think we're ready for the next generation. So if all of this is the case and this is hinting at a Johto remake, then maybe Kitakami is close to the Johto region. Maybe it is an area of land off of the Johto region. It's something that we've never explored before, and there will be callbacks and hints to Johto throughout NPCs and other people talking to you in this region. Let's take all of that as true. As I'm going to discuss in an upcoming video, we're almost assuredly getting a Pokemon Presents very soon in August. There's been a couple leaks that I will talk about in a future video. So before that video comes out and maybe debunks my entire theory, let's go with all of this logic that I have laid out being true. If you accept the premise that Kitakami is not this region to the northeast, if you accept that it is a Johto callback, maybe it's close to Johto on a map, or maybe it's not, but it still has inspiration from Japanese culture and from the Johto region. Now, of course, before I go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the Join tab, see if the perks interest you, and if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Then what's the deal with this little area of land that is sectioned off separate from the rest of the Paldea map? It's not part two of the DLC, that's in the middle of the ocean. It's very separate. Blueberry Academy and everything going on there that we don't know about just yet. Doesn't seem like it's a landmass. It's, it's in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. 
So what's going on here? I was on a podcast a couple weeks ago, Hidden Power Podcast with my friend Dusty Gogoat, Soul Silver Art, and Lumios Post. And in it, we discussed black and white remakes in the future, what we could see from Johto remakes, what the heck is going on with the DLC. We hit on all of this. It's a great watch. I'd highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave a card in the corner right now if you want to go see that. One of the things we discussed was, what if next year isn't Johto remakes? What if Pokemon is giving us another curveball? They're not giving us what we expect, which is something to fill the gap, a new game to fill the gap before we get the next generation on whatever Game Freak's next game, next main series Pokemon will be on Nintendo's next piece of hardware, because all reports seem to say that we're winding down on the Switch's life. What if instead it's more DLC? What if we're getting a second round of DLC expansion for Scarlet and Violet? Game Freak spent a lot of time developing this new engine, this new open world engine for Pokemon. It was clearly not optimized to its full potential in the base game of Scarlet and Violet. It's been a criticism that many members of the community have lobbed at the game from its release. As I've said in the past, there is a really great Pokemon game here, but there is a lot of jank on top of it. Things that need to be fixed and should have been fixed in patches. But Game Freak clearly doesn't seem interested in doing that. We'll see when the DLC comes out if there are any performance fixes included in those updates, but I don't think they're going to hide performance fixes behind a paywall of a DLC. I just don't see it happening. So they're going to use this engine in the long term. And what if they want to get some more mileage out of this engine and give us more DLC next year? I'm not even fully suggesting that DLC is going to be the only thing we get from Pokemon next year. I can see a world where we get a DLC 2, a second expansion pass that comes in the spring for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And in that expansion pass, we explore this area off to the northeast of Paldea. This entire DLC, Kitakami and whatever's going on with Blueberry Academy, is dubbed the hidden treasure of Area Zero. So whatever story content we do end up getting is still going to be tied to the mysteries of what's going on with Area Zero, the mysteries of what happened at the climax of Scarlet and Violet's story, what is going on with the hidden legendary Pokemon that seems to be one of the legendaries of the DLC, although we don't know how this is all connected just yet. What's the story here? This is Area Zero. This is what we've already explored in Scarlet and Violet, but the landmass to the northeast, I think, is separate. I don't think it has anything to do with the story that we're going to be indulging ourselves in in the DLC. I think this is, it, it, it still, to me, screams Kalos. It still screams callbacks to Kalos. I've covered in previous videos some of the lore connections that have been made and alluded to by NPCs and Pokedex entries about Mega Evolution and how people are reminded of Mega Evolution when they think of some of these Paradox Pokemon. They've clearly laid out some strings that connect us to Kalos. They never shy away from referencing geography in the Pokemon world, and they have never really changed the inspiration of their geography in the Pokemon world as it pertains to how those regions are based in the real world. So if there is a world where we get more DLC after the hidden treasure of Area Zero, and they decide that they want to give us more of an experience with this engine, I can see a world where we get another expansion that takes us to the northeast of Paldea and gives us Kalos connections. There does remain one other reason why I think Game Freak wouldn't necessarily want to abandon Pokemon Scarlet and Violet immediately after this DLC drops and why I think it could be one of two sets of DLC releases. Sales numbers. We just got the newest earnings report from Nintendo, and we have new numbers on Pokemon game sales. And as of June 30th, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has sold 22 and a half million units. By the next time we get sales data, it's going to outsell gold and silver. Its numbers are better to this point in its release than Sword and Shield, and Sword and Shield also sold incredibly well. For an engine that Game Freak developed a brand new open world the first time they had really done this, I, and with the strong sales data, 
I'm not necessarily sure that they immediately want to abandon this. And even if that means that they just take a lot of the stuff they developed in Scarlet and Violet and bring it to the next generation using it as a base, I still don't think they want to immediately abandon the player base that they have in Scarlet and Violet, considering how much competitive viability the games also have now that Pokemon Home is here. Now, of course, they do also have Legends Arceus, which is selling incredibly well for a single selling copy Pokemon game, but Scarlet and Violet is just an absolute behemoth. People seem to be talking about Kalos connections every single time there's a new game. There have been speculation about returning to Kalos forever because Kalos felt unfinished. Everything going on with Zygarde and what everyone expected to be a Pokemon Z seemed to get shoved into Sun and Moon because they wanted to have a game come out, a brand new generation, on an anniversary year 2016. And that made perfect sense. But it meant that a lot of Kalos's strings were not pulled. There was a lot going on in that region that never got explained and never got fleshed out in a third version. And at the time, we didn't have DLC. There were, weren't DLC packages for Pokemon games on the 3DS. This was a Switch innovation. So there was no way for them to really update X and Y and give us more of that story content. They didn't seem to be willing to do that outside of a new game in the same region, whether a third version or a sequel. So it was just left unsaid. We had some anime stuff that developed Zygarde and X and Y and Z, but the anime is not necessarily canon to the games. So if we do get DLC for Scarlet and Violet and we do get further DLC after the hidden treasure of Area Zero, I think this is where we could see this area explored. And I just think it's incredibly strange that this DLC seems to have nothing to do with this area of the map that is very clearly sectioned off in the exact same way that area that the crater is in Paldea, the great crater of Paldea. It's weird to me. I think there needs to be an explanation, and hopefully Game Freak does give us one, whether in this DLC or in more DLC in the future. So what do you guys think about Kitakami and its connection to the northeast of Paldea? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss any future Pokemon content. My name has been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.